So, Node uses a concept called as modules. The main thing with JavaScript, as we know of from the client side, is that all the functions or variables go and sit in the global namespace. You create a function which is encapsulated into another method which sits inside the main method. So if you are new to JavaScript or have a very basic idea of JavaScript, this thing might be a bit trippy. So we look at how things work in Node.js like that. So probably, the, the, I'm just stating the problem statement that uh, Node.js, <coughs> uh, stating the problem statement that Node.js, JavaScript has problems with code encapsulation. All the code lies all around the place. So Node.js came up with a system called as a common JS module system which uses two properties. One is called as an export, one is called as a require. Using these properties, we encapsulate the code. This is one of the design patterns of Node.js, how it implements things. So to give you a quick example, if I have a function called as add, like this, and then another function called as add, which has three arguments, like this. As we already know that this whole operation, in this process, this add will get overridden by this add. Or to keep this more in a more sophisticated way, I'm going to create a new file called as add.js and then I'm going to include the definition of these two inside it. Now the problem is that if I'm going to include this add.js inside the index.js file, I would get the overridden definition of this add.js. So what Node.js does is it implements a common JS module pattern to keep everything in its own namespace. To elaborate that clearly, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to create one file called as add1.js and another file called as add2.js. In add1.js, I'm going to have a function of add with two parameters. In add2.js, I'm going to have an add function with three parameters. Now, in, in both the add1.js and add2.js, I'm going to write a statement called as module.exports equal to add. So I'm exporting this add function. Similarly, here also. Now, the way you require or include these two JavaScript files into the main file is using a syntax like this where add1 equal to require dot slash add1.js. Similarly, add2 is equal to require add2.js. Using this design pattern, it clearly shows that you cannot directly use the add method and this definition will never get overridden by this definition at any point. They exist in individual files and they are not loaded in memory at the same time. If they are loaded in the memory in the same time, they are using a different definition. Now, to execute the add function, I need to use something called as an add1. This way, we can check that. Now, if I use the definition of add2, you can see that it becomes not a number because the z value is not defined. Undefined plus anything is nan in JavaScript. In a simple way, we just saw that how JavaScript takes care of uh, injecting different functions into one file for us with different namespaces. This very feature is not available in the browser itself. So what happens in the browser? Both the JS files get loaded into the global namespace. The latter definition overrides the prior definition. And then when you execute this, you always get NAN irrespective of what format you are using to load. Does this make sense? Okay, Kapil had a question which says this, is this functionality specific to Node but not V8? V8 is a JavaScript engine that runs this whole code. This functionality is specific to Node rather than V8. So this is a way of organizing your code which will be sent to the compiler so that variables do not get overwritten. Shouldn't this be add1.add? .add? Shouldn't this function be add1.add? The point is that it depends on how you exported it. 
we have directly exported the definition of the method. So here, if I would have written module.exports.add, then it would have become add1.add. And here, similarly, module.exports.add equal to add, it becomes that. So now add1.add method would give us the results. This is how Node.js takes care of managing modules for you. According to Node.js, this is one module, this is another module. They both run in their own different namespace and they are loaded only once into the memory based on this definition. In Node.js, any module which you use is always loaded up into the memory or to a namespace variable using the required statement. Require and then you use the syntax called as dot slash. Any references to modules that are relative to the current file and are not downloaded from the NPM repository, which we're going to do a bit later, is using a dot slash syntax. If it is in the current folder, it is dot slash. If it is in the parent folder, it is dot dot slash and so on. The same concept of relative path gets applied here. When it comes to any node modules that we are downloading from the server, that uses a direct way of dealing with it. So this is how Node.js loads things into its memory. So coming back to the slides, we are using something called as node modules inside Node.js to do these things. <coughs> there are three types of modules. Node.js written modules, which we are going to talk about in the Node.js source code. Modules that you have written, for example, the add functions, the add1.js and add2.js, and third-party modules which are coming from NPM. Besides certain built-in modules, all modules, <coughs> sorry, all modules can be used in your JS file by just saying where object equal to require and module name. Whereas the files which are built-in can be, sorry, which are built-in can be called like this, whereas the ones which are written by yourself will be using the relative part. Certain built-in modules are already available to use and that do not be required. We're going to talk about that a bit later. If you go to the node.js.org site and click on the doc links on top, this is the documentation reference for node.js methods and all its APIs. You can see a list of API methods supported by node.js here. For instance, we're going to talk about the OS. OS module consists of the operating system. There is a simple convention which comes with Node.js called as the API level, as with any programming language. So there is an API level associated with every single thing, which indicates if the API is frozen or if it is still under consideration of development purposes. Coming back to what we are talking, here the OS object consists of things which are available on the operating system like os.type returns the operating system name, os.platform returns the operating system, the architecture, the release, the uptime. So quick segue from what we are talking, uh, Venkatesh asked a question about using modules in a client-side application that the same way how we have done it in Node.js. The thing is, this the same approach cannot be directly available in while working with client-side JavaScript applications. You need to use a library like uh, a browserify to actually achieve something like this. Or you can use a require.js module to do this. You cannot directly use this kind of a syntax on your client side because this syntax is supported by Node.js to run JavaScript applications in inside your V8 engine. So you cannot do this on the client side directly. Coming back to the uh, Node.js modules we are working on right now, we're going to take up a simple module which is already available in memory like the OS module and then implement it. I'm going to create another folder called as example2. Inside example2, I'll create a file called as index.js. Now, the way I require a, a, a predefined module available in, in Node is by using like this, using just the syntax, require OS. Now, when I say console.log, let me put the os.type here, I can copy os.type and then run this. If I go back to my terminal, I'll right click on the file and say open terminal here and then run node 
index.js and hit return. It says I'm using the Darwin OS, which is the Apple version of it. OS.platform is another property. I can use console.log os.platform and then I can run it again using node index.js it also gives me the same thing. As you can see from here returns the operating system name, returns the operating system platform. If I want the architecture that is os.r I can type console.log os.r You can see I'm running a 64-bit operating system. The point here is that you are trying to use a Node module which is already available when you install Node.js. A module which is already available when you install Node.js. For example, the OS. Similarly, you can bookmark this link for docs and then go through the API references here. Each of the methods that we are going to work with which is already available with Node.js can be found here. So the ripple we have already looked into, the OS, the path. The HTTP, HTTPS modules are something which you want to look a bit later on. There are other things which you can do with your Node.js application that you can typically do with any other application. We have already started using the console and as you can see, console has many variations. Console.log, console.info, console.error, console.warn, console.dir, time, time end, trace and assert. So you can read more about each of these things, what they do and so on here. The process of using them is pretty simple. So like how we have been using them so far. A quick example which you can see of console.time gives us the processing time taken between two statements. Console.log, I'm going to create a label called as details. So as you can see, the console dot, I'm sorry, it is console dot time. I'm going to create a method called as console dot time which marks a time. And then I'm going to write another method called as console dot time end and provide the same label which I've provided in time. It finishes the timer, records the output. So for example, if I start the time before an operation and then after it, you can get the list, the amount of time taken to execute that. So I can do something like this, console dot time end and then I can provide the label called as details which is giving me the details about my operating system and then now when I run node.js it says it took two milliseconds for this operation to run. To quickly see another more uh, valid number I'm going to copy the exact code what is here where an empty loop runs with a semicolon and then you can see how much time it takes to process this still takes two milliseconds. This is another way how you can use console.time and console.trace. You can go through the documentation which is pretty straightforward to do, which is pretty straightforward and you can do it as you see here. You can always go back to the index page and look for other documentation. 